So here we are, up 12 kilometers in the air on a floating island. There's the sun, it's giving out high energy ultraviolet light as well as other sorts of electromagnetic rainbows. And there is chlorofluorocarbon. Two chlorines, two fluorines bonded to a central carbon atom. Now this high energy electromagnetic radiation from the sun actually preferentially breaks one of those bonds than the other. In fact, it breaks the carbon chlorine bond, leaving an electron on the chlorine, that little red dot, and an electron on the carbon. These are both radicals and are highly reactive. The chlorine radical destroys ozone. Okay, so why do chlorofluorocarbons uh, break down to release chlorine radicals, but typically not fluorine radicals? Well, here is a typical chlorofluorocarbon. It's got covalent bonds between carbon and chlorine and carbon and fluorine. And here on table 12 is the average bond energies, how much energy it takes to break a mole of these bonds uh, in the gaseous state, copyright IB. And what's the strongest bond? Well, lo and behold, it's the uh, carbon fluorine bond is the strongest bond. And so carbon chlorine bond is weaker. Well, it has to be, doesn't it? So when the sun uh, light uh, with the high intensity UV is striking the CFCs in the ozone layer, about 12 kilometers above the planet, it's going to break the weaker of the bonds. There isn't really enough energy to break the stronger one. And so the two electrons in that covalent bond, one stays with uh, the CF2Cl to make a radical, and the other electron in that bond goes to make a chlorine radical less likely to happen with the CF bond because it's a stronger bond. And we're done.